All right, now, Paul, when she gets out here, yes. I, I don't want you to be embarrassed. If you have anything you'd like to say, by all means, say it. Don't, I can't. Don't be embarrassed oh. about anything. Don't be embarrassed there's, about it. There's nothing okay. you can say that will embarrass this woman. No, because okay. she knows, knows everything, and she just don't care. She, okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Our next guest is considered Canada's most recognized sex expert. She hosts a popular television program on the Oxygen Network entitled Talk Sex with Sue Johansson. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen, Sue Johansson. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you, and if things go well, I can get you a sweater. Uh... I just hope she doesn't drop a stitch. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, you tell me a little bit ab about yourself and how this all began and, and uh, why you're here tonight. And so you know, forth. that's the most common question I get. Mm -hmm. What is a nice lady like you doing in this business? Right. You know, you'd think I was out peddling something on the, the main street. No, but I think it's invaluable and I think that it's good that it is someone like you. Um, yes, you know that this is one time age uh, gives you a real bonus mm -hmm. because uh, you have credibility. Right. I'm not seen as cute and um, <laughs> bodacious. <laughs> 28A won't make it, dear. Uh -huh. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, but you, you started out in, um, in, in, in nursing, you were a healthcare I'm, worker? In I'm a nurse. Yeah, and, and, and how did you get to this specific area? By having kids and realizing that, you know, I knew my kids were born 10 months apart. Does that give you a clue? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Long, cold winters in Canada. In, in Kenora, yeah. yes, yes, there were. And nothing else to do. So, uh, but I realized I knew diddly squat. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, lady, if you're going to talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to pull the plug on the whole thing. Oh. But now, now tell me on, on, on your radio, your Sunday night radio talk show in, in Canada. Yes. Uh, you get calls from all across North America, probably. Yes. Uh, and what are people talking about? What do they want to know? What are they worried about? What are they concerned about? Are, are there any really new questions about sex? Oh, yeah, there are quite a few new ones. Um, there's a pre but the old preoccupation with penis size. Mm -hmm. You know, bigger is better. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be a good lover, you've got to have a 12-inch. Easy, easy. <laughs> God. Let's, uh, let's and go back to the even... Al Jazeera network and see yeah. if we got anybody that's... Uh... Okay, all right, fine. That's nobody there yet. Oh, dear. Uh, well, what about that? What do, uh... I know. When, when that question comes up, what do you, how do you reply? Oh, but you see, what people don't realize is that penis size does not matter because the top two-thirds of the vagina has no nerve endings. There's nobody home up there. <laughs> Yeah, but it's the bottom I one know, third okay. that's where the action is. <laughs> don't, now don't be embarrassed, Paul. <laughs> now, um, I, I was I was thinking about this today, and and uh, <laughs> not not that not that uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> we won't go there. Although it has crossed my mind. Oh yeah, I'm sure. But uh, in, in terms of safe sex, and I, I, I felt very ignorant, what, what definitively, what can people do safely and what can't people do safely? Just tell us what we can, what we can't do. Well, there's no such thing as safe sex. The only safe sex is no sex. Abstinence. Total. But, see, but, but that doesn't work. But the problem is people really do want to have sex. Well, yes, and sex is fun. It's pleasurable. It's enjoyable. It enhances a relationship. And as long as you've got good protection, why not? Mm -hmm. If you know what you're doing and you're able to think ahead right. and plan ahead, then and it's a decision. That's where I run into trouble, is because we don't give good sex education, right. then they don't, you can't make a decision in a vacuum. Uh -huh. Now, now, let me ask you a question, and I'll be as specific, as generally specific as I can be. Uh, vaguely specific. Yeah. Right. Okay, we can go there. Uh, say, say two people are prepared to have safe sex. A man and a woman are going to have safe sex, and they, they got all the stuff they need for safe sex. Yeah, it's bedside table. Yeah, it's all Don't there. leave it there. Where, where do you put it? <laughs> <laughs> where, do you, where, where do you put it, but not but next to the bed? You don't want to leave it downstairs in the cellar. Oh, no, no, no. You take a condom and you flirt with it. I see. And you say, hi, big guy. Oh. <laughs> no, you, no, you don't. <laughs> not in my house. Ah. <laughs> now, now, listen. 
No, no, wait a minute. Okay, so so we're we're gonna we're gonna have safe sex now. Safer sex, yeah. But you say there is nothing safe except for abstinence. What no, no. what mistake can can people with safe sex in their heads make? What can they do wrong and suddenly, uh oh, that was a mistake? The only basic problem would be not using a condom. Not knowing who your partner is, All right, well, we know not partner. knowing approximately where your partner has been and right. what they've done. Have they ever done heavy-duty drugs, right. been shooting up? That's risky behavior. Right. And then um, always practicing safer sex. Right, right. but other, other activities other than I I intercourse, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Do you ever, on your radio show, do you ever get uh, silly calls or uh, unusual calls or do, do sometimes people joke with you, do you think, when you, or are they all serious? Oh, I'm sure that there are put, what they call put-on mm -hmm. calls. Yeah. Um, you can usually tell. But I treat them as a definite uh, concern or question because although it may be a put-on call, somebody out there has that question. Might be thinking about it, And yeah. they really believe that if you swallow ejaculate, you can get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get embarrassed, Paul. <laughs> He's from Canada. Yeah, I know. He's not going to get embarrassed. The, uh, what's the? Do you have any memorable uh, questions uh, th that uh, you can uh, relate to us now? Uh, silly calls that you've gotten? Uh, that uh, interesting, unusual? Well, of course, there are a lot of, of fun calls that come in, and um, but you know, I don't like to. Um, equ equate it as a silly call, right? Because I take it seriously, right. and so um, I'm much more impressed with the scary calls that I get about sexual abuse or something uh -huh. like that. Right. Those are the ones that I remember. Those are the ones that I take home with me. What, what was it the deal with the kid who called up about the uh, the jar of peanut butter? Oh yes, well you had to ask, didn't you? Yeah. You couldn't resist that one. <laughs> you want to go there? <laughs> This guy was uh, phoned in and asked if it was okay if he could masturbate into a jar of peanut butter. <laughs> oh, Lord. That'll get you thrown out of the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I have an IFB in my ear, uh -huh. you know, an IFB. Right. Connect me to the control room. And uh, my uh, director is saying, Ask if it's crunchy or smooth. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. sure. It makes all the difference. Absolutely. My key word is gently but Now, I've never eaten peanut butter since. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is, is Canada more progressive uh, regarding sexual education than the United States? Uh, at this point in time, yes. And, and why is that? That sure doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, I think it's political, mm -hmm. and I think that they, there's some people who really believe that if you talk to kids about sex and teach them about sex, they're going to go right out and do it. Now, is there any proof to substantiate that? No, 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 that? it's the opposite. Really? That if you teach kids about sex, then they know what's going to happen. They know where they're, what they're into petting and French kissing and fondling, and then they think, whoa, wait a minute, I know where this is going. Right. Uh-uh. I don't want to go there. I'm not ready. I don't like my body. I don't want your body liking my body. Yeah. Forget it. Yeah. Uh, but what about the notion, uh, you, you hear these horror stories of, of kids in, in schools uh, having sexual activities at younger and younger and younger ages, yes, and it's just a, alarming. I, I mean, I was well into my 30s. Ah. <laughs> 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 ah. <laughs> But, I mean, is that true? Are kids having actual sex at a, at a much younger age? They're reaching puberty earlier than they used they to? They are reaching puberty about six months earlier with every generation now. Now, why does that happen? Nutrition. Really? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Where they're much better fed, their balanced diet, and also the exposure to the media yeah. and what they see on television. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, other kids are talking it up. We didn't talk it up. We no. didn't, you know. No, nobody talked to me about nothing. No, well, I didn't know enough <laughs> either. And um, that's why I got into this business. But uh, nowadays, every TV show. Yeah. And so that they think they're missing something. And they don't know what they're missing, but try it, you'll like it. Well, listen, it was, uh, it was a, g a great pleasure meeting you. I'm glad you could come down here, and I hope you come back. Will you come I'd back? I'd love to. All right, thank you very Absolutely much. Absolutely love Sue to. Sue Johansson, thank everybody. You. We'll be right back with Minus Five and Wilson.